I'm Kirk Harnack for the Telos Alliance. So you've got your Omni 11 with version 3.0 software and GeForce. So where do you start? Where do you get started with your settings? And how do you get to where you want to be exactly? Well, good news. Cornelius Gould, the lead developer of GeForce, is along with us right now to show you how. Corny? Here we are looking at the user interface for the Omnia 11 uh, GeForce. And uh, here you see a block that shows you your basic input output levels, uh, the wide band AGC, the multi band AGCs, the limiters, uh, FM clipper and HD uh, sections, as well as the output sections. Now this section up here on the Omnia 11 audio processor basically constitutes an active icon uh, interface. As you click on these active icons, it gives you access to uh, the various functions that they're displaying. So if I were to click on the input block here, you'll see you get all the input level adjustments, uh, the all of your input options, whether it's stereo, mono, left, right, left, plus, right, or swap the left and right channels if you needed to. You can also invert the polarity of one channel or the other or both uh, channels of audio going into the Omni 11 and select the failover sources and all of that, all of your options there for input as well as the insertion point by clicking on advanced for uh, adding things like the watermark encoders into the processing chain. Uh, clicking on the uh, processing blocks again brings you the audio processing uh, window here. We'll get into that uh, in a moment, but clicking again will give you access to the controls for the various sections of the multiband audio processor. And you'll also see that the metering here to the left uh, changes. I'll go back to the wideband AGC here. And, and gives you a, a zoomed in detailed view of what the icon blocks are showing you on their meters. So here we have the multi-band AGCs again. You can see all five bands of AGC doing their thing. And uh, if we click on the limiter block, you'll see the uh, multi-band limiters and the clipper. You can see the clipper activity here. Um, this shows this blue display here shows you the depth of, of clipping happening. There's a little red flash you might see every so often appearing. That's an indication that you could potentially hear some audible distortion uh, and whether or not that rings true really depends on your markets. Different markets have a different tolerance for distortion levels. So some may routinely have a dB or two of what the meter would tell you is distortion, even though it won't sound, it doesn't necessarily sound like that in your market, uh, but other markets it could. So it's just kind of a heads up. Uh, the more red you see for longer periods of time, it it's means that you should probably go and revisit how you're adjusting things. Um, clicking on the HD, you can see that there's a little uh, equalizer here on, on this preset that looks like there's some games being played to, to do this EQ curve here, um, as well as you know navigating around to the, the HD limiter section, the census, and the base adjustments. Clicking on output block gives you access to all the outputs on the Omni 11, whether it's the analog uh, left-right outputs, uh, the AES EBU outputs, uh, your live wire outputs or the front panel headphones, you can decide what there is to listen to there, whether listening to the FM side HD, the, the low latency DJ path, or the insertion point. Also, this is where you set your composite levels and pilot injection for modulations, uh, for modulation adjustments, and uh, other options such as diversity delay and HD radio for the United States, and uh, the BS412 uh, power limiter for uh, European EU countries that to comply to that. Uh, we also have uh, options for HD. And on the, not only on GeForce, but also on the 3.0 standard release, you have the option to send the uh, watermark encoding data to the HD, which is on by default. Or if you have an outboard HD encoder, which we've run across uh, some situations like that, you can turn off the insertion point to the HD side so that you can insert your outboard encoder for HD1 watermark encoding. So when you first get the Omni 11 and you fire it up and you have it in your shop, you're gonna get a screen like, uh, like this on the front panel and on the remote app where you'll see this, this um, box here with all of these uh, presets here. For using the Omni 11 and Omni 11 GeForce for the first time, we recommend before you put on the air that you kind of go through the list and listen to the various presets. You can select them by just clicking on them and you'll see up at the top here, you'll, you'll see the display changed and shows you what the preset is that you just selected on the air. 
you can go through and select different ones and see what this sounds like. If the texture matches the vision of the programming of the radio station that uh, both you and the program director has, or maybe just the program director, <laughs> uh, go ahead and, and start with that. After you've selected a preset for use on the air, uh, what you should do then is to go back to the processing block and just click on Quick Setup. Now, the neat thing about Quick Setup is that many of these controls adjust dozens and dozens of parameters under the hood, uh, parameters that aren't part of normal uh, user controls that are downstream. And what we do is we have um, ranges set up with all of these under the hood parameters that, that these controls influence uh, so that you can shape a preset to sound more like your market. So the first uh, set of adjustments you have on the quick setup tab is a clipper drive, which is actually duplicated. If you go here to the FM clipper, the clipper drive is there as well. But in quick setup, we put it here to be in a convenient spot with all the other controls here. So clipper drive here adjusts the brute force loudness of the audio processor. So the harder you drive it, the more brute force loudness you have. Also, the harder you drive it, chances are the more distortion you might pick up. So you have to be careful there. And remember I was telling you about the uh, clip meter here. If you turn it up higher and higher, you'll see that the meter reads uh, more and more, indicating possibility of picking up uh, more distortion. Limiter drive adjusts the texture of the audio. So the harder you drive it, the thicker the audio sounds, and 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 uh, and it does that by driving the multiband limiter stage harder. Uh, you can do that in GeForce without worry because the limiter really handles itself. Feel free to play with it. A lot of people were amazed at what you can do with the limiters in GeForce by just driving them harder or lighter. You've got uh, bass controls here if you uh, to adjust the overall bass level because you know many times all you want to do is just turn up the bass a little more, turn it down a little bit more on a preset, and it'll be perfect. So this control allows you to do that. Uh, bass thump, the higher you set up, the more emphasis uh, of the kick drum comes through. Uh, the lower that number is, the, the less of an emphasis there is on kick drum action or dynamic kick, uh, low uh, frequency percussion elements. Presence, trouble, and brightness, they they set what type of high end your this processor is going to have for your market. So the higher you set this level, the more presence you get or the more treble or the more air or sparkly, sparkle you have on the air. It's a great way of matching the tonal quality of the preset to your market. Be careful with sparkle, by the way. Don't use too much. It can be really annoying if you go too far. Be very judicious and, and just take your time with that uh, control. It's really cool. And the temptation to really crank on it is, is large, but just listen carefully. Uh, also, you have uh, access to the stereo enhancer control. So stereo enhance is the overall stereo enhancement level for GeForce. The stereo enhancer in GeForce has been uh, reworked. It's it's quite a bit different from what was in the previous version. Um, it has a little more effect to it, and it also turns itself off on mono material. Uh, stereo enhanced density adjusts the speed at which the stereo enhancer is running. The higher the number, the faster the, the stereo enhanced function is working. Faster settings are good at bringing out elements that kind of ping pong around in the sound field. Uh, it brings them out into the mix and into the stereo sound field more. Lower numbers slows it down, which tends to bring out the ambience and, and the program content. So things like reverb and all that, that gives you that sense of space. Slower numbers will pull that out as well. You may find that you have to reduce the stereo enhance a bit when you go with lower uh, density numbers. So uh, and certainly you've got all these other controls you can get into uh, to, to adjust parameters. Our manuals can go over and tell you more detail on that. But if you're not familiar with working at audio processors with that level, I would suggest you stick here. Most of the time that we've gone from markets from New York to uh, the, some of the smaller markets that have been testing GeForce, these controls have been about 99% of what we needed to do. And we may have gone in and touched like one or two controls in the other areas to kind of customize things for a program director. So don't underestimate the power of the quick setup tab in GeForce. It's very powerful compared to other audio processors. Thanks so much, Corny. I really learned a lot there, and I feel confident in setting up my Omni 11 now, too. If you have more questions beyond what Corny talked about, of course, you can go to the telosalliance.com website and get lots of information about the Omni 11. Download the manual, or if you need to, give support a call. The phone number is on your screen right now, or send an email to support. The email address is on your screen. Or go to the website and fill out a support request. Any of those ways, they'll get back to you.
Thanks for watching. I'm Kirk Harnack for the Telos Alliance.